The Bible claims to be the Word of God, but many find it difficult to trust. Is it reliable? How can a book that's been around for almost 2,000 years be relevant for us today? These are great questions. And today, I'd like to shed some light on some very specific prophecies in scriptures that could never have been fulfilled by mere coincidence or human effort. We're going to look at three scriptures, each of which was written hundreds of years before Jesus and accurately predicted his birth, life, ministry, and death. Let's open the Bible and consider some of the Messianic prophecies. Prophecies about Jesus. The word Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, and they both mean the anointed one, a description usually reserved for a king. Consider this prophecy from the prophet Isaiah around 700 BC or 700 years before the birth of Christ. Here now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This Hebrew name, Emmanuel, means God with us, which is exactly what Jesus would later claim to be, the very person of God in human flesh living among us. And then in Micah 5, verse 2 and 4 through 5, which was written about the same time as Isaiah, we are given even fuller details about Jesus' birth and ministry. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. So the Bible predicts that a leader will come from Bethlehem, an insignificant backwater town in Israel, but its fame will reach to the ends of the earth. Centuries later, these prophecies will be fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, this is what Luke reports about in his gospel story. Caesar Augustus was taking a census of the entire Roman world. Luke 2, verse 4 through 7. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. In the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph almost called off the marriage with Mary because it wasn't his child until an angel came to him and explained to him about the virgin birth. Even though they were living in Nazareth, because of the government census, they traveled to Bethlehem where Jesus would be born. Okay. Many of these prophecies deal with details about Jesus' birth, many of which we are familiar with because of our Christmas traditions. But now let's turn our attention to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Let's look at Psalm 22, written hundreds of years before Christ. It's a long passage, so we're going to focus on a few key verses. As he hung on the cross, Jesus quoted Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalm 22 verse 7 says, All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Which we see in Matthew 27 verse 41 through 42. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. In verse 16 of Psalm 22, the psalmist writes, Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. When Jesus was crucified, they pierced his hands and feet on the cross. Psalm 22 verse 18 says, They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. In Mark 15 verse 24, the soldiers crucified him, dividing up his clothes they cast lots to see what each would get. Psalm 22 verse 22 is a faithful statement of restoration to brothers. I will declare your name to my people. 
in the assembly, I will praise you. One fascinating piece of scripture written around 700 BC predicts the life and death of the Messiah and gets it completely accurate. We see that throughout his ministry, Jesus was rejected and even hated. Whether betrayal, murder of relatives, or his excruciating torture and death on the cross, Jesus was certainly familiar with suffering. When Jesus was crucified, they pierced his hands and feet to the wood. They also pierced his side with a spear to see if he was dead. The message of the New Testament is clear. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we find healing and are reunited with God. He was indeed silent on his way to death. He'll get a grave with the rich and the poor. Wow, how will that work? Well, Jesus had the mass grave of those crucified and then was brought to the wealthy Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. What an incredible prophecy. Jesus rose from the dead. This is the great victory that we celebrate as Christians. He died and was raised again. He made intercession for the transgressors. On the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Showing mercy is the opposite of demanding justice, and this is at the heart of forgiveness. Through the cross, we see God's willingness to put legal justice aside and himself suffer injustice so that we might be forgiven. It is God who makes the sacrifice in our salvation, not us. Many of these prophecies were fulfilled outside of Jesus' control. But even if he was orchestrating these events, trying to fulfill the prophecies artificially, would he go so far as to be killed? I mean, if he didn't believe in the prophecies, why would he count on the resurrection? We've covered just a few of the over 300 messianic prophecies, all of which were fulfilled in Jesus. Mathematics and astronomy professor Peter W. Stoner uses a probability illustration. For only eight of these messianic prophecies to come true, by sheer luck, he says it would be analogous to covering the state of Texas with 100 trillion silver dollars, filling the state two feet deep, then mark a random one and send someone in blindfolded and they pick the marked one up on their first try. Of course, that's just the professor's analogy, not a fact, but you get the point. If these weren't divine prophecies, it would be impossible for them to all come true by mere coincidence or human effort. It's important to note that these prophecies were not written after Christ, tampered with by the church. These are Jewish prophecies that predate Christianity entirely and are read today in modern Jewish synagogues. I hope you enjoyed this small exploration of Messianic prophecies. We look forward to exploring more exciting biblical topics in future videos. So please subscribe and hit the bell so you can know when they come out. God bless.